Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining me today on your Thursday morning science and celebrity chat show. I'm delighted that you could be here. I am your host, Ben Makin. And today I have the fabulous guest co-presenter, James. James, how are you doing? Hello sir? there. Yeah, I'm, I'm all good. Thank you. How, how are you feeling this morning? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Thanks. You know what? I'm pretty excited, as always. I'm always quite excited on Thursday mornings. You're very excitable on a Thursday. I am very. true. Yeah, yeah, very excitable. (laughs) Shall I tell tell these listeners what we got coming up today? What have we got? What have we got? Well, you're going to be excited, okay? And you know, I, I use the cheeky word celebrity. I, I kind of throw that around a little bit when it comes to the well, Thursday morning breakfast. Well, that's for me, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, exactly. Yeah, I'm exactly. a celebrity here. Yeah. Well, we got you for a start. <laughs> so, I mean, we're already kind of set, aren't we? Yeah. But we also have, actually, and this is fantastic, Pixie McKenna. She, if you haven't heard of Pixie, well, it's time you did. She is a uh, TV doctor. She's on Embarrassing Bodies. This is actually the second TV doctor we've had on the show, actually. Yeah, who, who was the first? Who so we had a, another um, doctor from uh, Embarrassing Bodies as well. Ah, so we've nearly got the hat okay. trick. We've nearly got the hat trick of the uh, of the main guy who's Embarrassing Bodies. Are you trying to tell people something, you know, the Embarrassing Bodies <sighs> doctors? Oh, no, I don't think it wasn't that <laughs> obvious, actually. <laughs> Oop, oopsie! Well, no. Okay, well, I tell you what, we'll get her on the show. She's actually today talking a little bit about the EU milk scheme. It's oh, actually okay. in a bit in a nice. bit of a state of peril in light, in light of uh, Brexit. So we'll, uh, uh-huh. we'll chat a little bit about that later. We've got on the show anyway, chatting about dairy, chatting about milk. Yeah, who doesn't want to hear a bit about dairy? Come yeah, on. Yeah, everyone loves a bit of dairy, right? Get that in for you. It's intolerant and then yeah, you probably yeah. don't. Yeah, you're probably not a fan. In yeah, that you're case. probably not a fan. Now, we also have a, a few other really interesting interviews, actually. So we're going to touch on some serious notes. I know what you're thinking. Ben, not, a, not another serious <laughs> note. You can't stand it when I try and do serious radio. No, of course not. <laughs> I am going to attempt a bit of serious radio today, actually. And uh, this is an issue which, you know, we, uh, we do touch on quite often when it comes to, um, well, women in STEM. Uh, but in this case, actually, we're talking about women in senior leadership roles. And essentially, this research actually, I've got Jason Darby. He's the head of psychology from Thomas International uh, oh, on the wow. show with us. And he's actually going to be talking today a little bit about some research that they've done, basically debunking these uh, quite harmful myths, actually. We'll get going to this a bit more um, about how uh, males and females might be different in senior leadership roles. Mm, so perfect. we're going to you know, That's hopefully dispel some myths and chat a little bit about, well, essentially these stereotypes that are harmful and hopefully try and weed them out, basically. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, this is a this is an ongoing thing, but, you know, anything that we can do to help that. Of course. Fantastic. Yeah. So we'll have a chat about that later. Uh, we also have a vet on the show as well chatting about pets because who doesn't love pets? So we thought, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, a bit of a lighthearted <laughs> section about pets. We've got a vet, Dr. Hugh Stacey on the show later. You know what? I, t- I didn't know about Dr. Hugh Stacey. If you Google him. You'll find out he's a very attractive man pretty well, quickly. Well, you know, it goes with the whole vet thing, doesn't it? It does. I, I think it I must think. be. Do you think it yeah, must, must be on the selection be. forms? Must be, yeah. Must yeah. be. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he's also got an absolutely cracking, cracking music taste. Yeah. His I don't know where breast. you'd go with that for a second, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Excellent, yeah. <laughs> after nine o'clock, we can probably delve into that a bit further, but not quite yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we have a we have even more for you actually because Co-op have, as well have just recently announced the ban of single-use plastics in store. So I have Ian Ferguson, the environment manager from Co-op, chatting to us a little bit about that and their ongoing mission to essentially eliminate plastics in their supply chains. Oh, nice. So we'll be chatting about that. More stuff as well. We'll see how we go with this. Okay, we'll, ju- yeah. we'll just see how we go because. You know, I'm keen as well to get any requests that you might have. And yeah, I mean, as always, got to fit in some Michael Bolton as well. I'm obviously, sorry, that, that's the one thing I want to bring to this show. You know, you know, we should have we should have started with some, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah, we, we should have really, but oh, uh, you can't have everything. Oh can no, you? I, no, no, mate, I've just re- I just remembered. What's up? The on-air contract. It's it specifically says Michael Bolton first. Oh no! All right, well, we've got to go. We've got to sorry, guys. Got to right. go. See you guys later. Sorry, mate. Oh, I can't believe we forgot that. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Bye. 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 See you. Yeah, see you next week, mate. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I tell you, I tell you what, we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll try and we'll try and run this show. Let's just let's just tell you what we'll get. We can. Yeah, we'll get on Michael Bourne as soon as is humanly possible. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm going to kick off with an interview though, just to you know, just get you in the, in the mood for a bit of radio. Oh yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. 
And uh, make sure you don't go anywhere. You know, this is this is the serious bit. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Thank you. Sorry, okay. Laughing. Right. No, no, you shouldn't be laughing. Anyway, I tell you what. Let's get kicked off and. Should we start with the co-op news, actually? Yeah. I think that's, that's, that. that's important. That's, 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 a, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, you know, we do like to have a little bit of a, a focus on science on this breakfast. Only, I mean, sometimes. Mm, loosely. Rare, very rare, very rare. Loosely science, I think. Uh, so I'd love to get uh, Ian Ferguson from the co-op group on the show right now. So I do hope you enjoy this, guys. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. And, of course, my fabulous and devilishly handsome co-presenter, James. Hello there. On this morning's Thursday breakfast show. Enjoy. Thursday breakfast on Source FM. Good morning, I'm Ian Ferguson. I'm the environment manager for the Cooperative Food. I'm here to talk to you about our plans for compostable carrier bags and wider plastic initiatives. Thanks, Ian. Well, this is fantastic. Uh, this is exciting news, isn't it, for anyone who's who's thinking about the environment, of course, with the announcement of the of your move, essentially, to ban single-use plastics. And, of course, that starts, doesn't it, with the, with the banning of single-use plastic carrier bags. It's very, very exciting news. I'm, I'm over the moon with being able to land this. This is such an important move. Yes, that's fantastic. I mean, just just um, just for our listeners, just so they're fully aware, Ian. So, what what are the plans? What are the plans that the co-op now has in terms of starting to you know clamp down on single-use plastics? Right. When one of the key things is the removing the, com- the standard carrier bags from as many stores as possible yes. and replacing them with certified compostable carrier bags that can be used for food waste, to line the food waste caddy if your council um, collects food waste um, to, to replace buying one or the council supplying one. And I know that Cornwall uh, Council are actually looking at the idea of introducing food waste collections and our bags will be absolutely ideal to help them Fantastic. in all the stores across Cornwall. We have a lot of stores in Cornwall. And beyond that, we are planning to uh, remove Black plastic. We have a program to remove black plastic and dark coloured plastics um, to support moves that, such as Cornwall Council have made on collecting plastic pots, tubs, and trays. Um, we're making them more viable for them by narrowing the range of plastics we use and making them lighter colour. Fantastic. I think it's absolutely fantastic that uh, well companies like Co-op are, are, are really taking note of this. I mean, clearly they are. I mean, the fact that you're you know you're on the radio with us today. I mean, it just just is evidence of that. And I think because I, I guess to the average person, right? I mean, you often hear this. You know, there is a, of course a lot of um, you know pressure coming from people now who are becoming more aware of of their use of their plastic use and aware of their impact on the environment and things you know we constantly see don't we in uh, you know these fantastic nature documentaries and things of the negative impacts of plastic but I, I'm, I imagine it's actually you know a very difficult task to begin to change this because i mean we're talking about you know huge supply chains aren't we so i, I imagine there's actually it's actually very hard work to do that well, some things are actually very easy to change, but some of the things you would think would be simple are actually quite complicated. So yes. We, we changed our pizza discs from expanded polystyrene to cardboard um, fairly recently, the last couple of years, and that actually took four years to land, Yes. surprisingly. Um, there's a lot of work goes into it. We have to make sure that it's the right material so it doesn't change the flavour of the pizza, that it, nothing moves from the cardboard into the pizza that's dangerous yes and then you find that when you run it down the production line and it jams it damages the machinery because yes, it's silent course. and solid it's it, it can take a long time no i can i can i can imagine that actually i mean i think it's uh you know it's great that people like yourself are, are constantly pushing the issues to, to get important issues like this you know to the front so that actually makes changes you know you're saying at the beginning you're you know you're really excited that you you know that this is finally it's finally happening so i think it's a fantastic well congratulations really for for allowing it to to get this far and hopefully you know you'll have you know lots of success in your in your campaign to remove plastics elsewhere because I, I imagine you know one of the things you, you were kind of mentioning there was um you know these plastics that essentially can't be recycled and you're, and you're essentially trying to phase those out it sounded like that's correct I mean, we've, we've done some work on sushi, for example, where um, sushi is generally sold on a black tray to, to show the sushi off to its best. Uh, and that was a challenge. So we, our supplier did some creative design and they came up with a clear tray with a clear lid and they put black card behind it so that the sushi still stands out. But the whole pack is now easy to recycle. Yes. 
And then we've got tea bags. Who knew tea bags had plastic in them? Yes. <laughs> but we are going to be, be launching later this year. We're going to be doing lots of trials, which is quite complicated. We've got to be launching uh, fully compostable tea bags that don't have any residues once they've been through the food waste collection system. I, so I imagine actually, you know, just for the uh, average person uh, listening in, you know, they're probably a bit surprised to hear that things like tea bags even have plastics in. And I imagine that goes for an awful lot of products, actually. So, you know, when you're saying, you know, you're working to, to phase out plastics, actually, probably the magnitude of that of that endeavour becomes apparent when you think how many things do have plastics in there. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I mean, I was just thinking about, um, you know, of, of course, people hear about um, you know, microplastics and things as well all the time and a really important area. But really what I was kind of hoping to ask you as well, Ian, because I don't know, I don't know what your thoughts will be on this. But of course, you know, it's fantastic that there's pressure from from yourself and from the co-op to, to change their production lines and, and things like this and phase plastics out. But do you think also the consumer, you know, as a, as a consumer can make choices that, that help in this area as well. I mean, do, would, I'm just trying to think really of, you know, and I don't want, don't want to use the word blame at all here, but I just want to say like, you know, in, in terms of if people accept, you know, responsibility for what, they, for what they're doing, I mean, perhaps consumer has a lot to, a lot to answer for as well, right? It's not just, it's not just the side of the, of the supermarkets. It's actually the consumer choosing those products. It's the, it's the consumer choosing products. I mean, for example, the, we took uh, the plastic stems off cotton buds, in 2006 yes. um, it's taken a while for others to catch up that would have moved faster if the consumers had chosen our cotton buds over others yes. um, but, but it is very difficult for consumers because you go on a shopping trip and you want your store to be uh, you, you just want to be able to shop and packaging is probably the last thing in your mind when you're going around the store Yes, well, certainly in the past so what you want is a, as, a, as a retailer who will um, do their best to make it easy for you in in the whole store. Yes. So you, you know that when you go into the store, if you buy the, the own brand products, you know the retailer has done their best. And once the retailer has done their best and you've taken it home, then you need to follow the instructions that your local authority gives you to, so that you can help them. But then you can still challenge your local authority to say, why aren't you collecting this? Why aren't you doing food waste collection? Yes. They'll have an answer. It's not easy for everybody, anybody, but... You know, the more pressure is, the more that, that everybody has to respond. I think that's a really good point, actually, for, you've just raised there. You know, in terms of people can people can actually question, and, and that's what generates the pressure, I guess, for, you know, for for anything to change, of course, you know, you, as, as hopefully is probably becoming a bit aware for people, and, and, and certainly, for, certainly for myself in just chatting to you now, it, it just becomes kind of obvious just how difficult it is to do this, you know, with the supply chains, I mean, that pizza example, for instance, you know, there's a lot of work has to be done, doesn't it? So I, I think if people, you know, wish to see that being done, then, then really there has to be that pressure there, doesn't there? There has to be that questioning. It does. I mean, it, it's great that there's questioning, and we try and answer the questions as honestly as possible. Well, we've answered the questions honestly, actually. Um, but we have to, you know, it has to take. It will take time, and I think we'd like people to look at our record when they see the answers we give them to think, right, okay, they're being honest about it, and it will take time. But at least we think the corp are working on it. Yes. That's fantastic. Well, well Ian, I mean, I th- thanks very much, and I really do congratulate you for this for this um, you know this campaign. I think it's uh, fantastic, and, and I really do wish you you know all the success in in in, in it continuing, and, and hopefully you do you know manage to reach reach all these fantastic goals. And I'm sure, I'm sure you will. You know, it sounds like you're making absolutely fantastic progress in the area of plastics. So you know, thanks very much as well for coming you know coming to chat to us about it to let our let our listeners know all about it. And uh, just yes. to check, Ian, um, you know, I'd just love to double check really that you're all happy and, and really. If you'd like to point, uh, you know, listeners in the direction of any further information or anything like this about the campaign or anything further like that, I'd love you to basically have the chance to point listeners for further information or anything like that. Well, before I do that, can I say that one of our targets is to make all our packaging easy to recycle by 2023, um, and with an interim of 80% of our products being recyclable by 2023 by 2020. And we've actually reached 73% from a, you know, a base of about just over 45%. So we have made big progress. Fantastic. Customers can contact our customer care line um, by phone, by free post, or by, by email. So and all, through social media, we, we answer all the questions in those ways, as well as people being able to look on our website. 
Oh, that's great. Well, thanks so much, Ian. I mean, this is a really, really positive message today for people, and thanks for taking the time to chat to us about it on, on the radio. Thanks very much, Ian. You're very welcome. Now, Thank Ian, you just, very much. Just before I let you go, Ian, now this is this is the silly question, I'm afraid, but I'd love to get you a... I don't know if you'd like a song request at all. Could I, could I interest you in a song choice? Oh. <laughs> Red I Love by Golden Earring. It's not played enough. Oh, fantastic! No, I love, I love it how you had it just right on demand as well. Some people kind of Brilliant struggle with baseline. that. Yeah, fantastic. Well, Ian, thank you very much indeed. I will let you go then, but thanks very much, and thank you for your campaign. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Bye, Ian. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was a pretty impressive song choice, don't yeah, you think, James? We, yeah, we were driving in the studios that, weren't we? Yeah, Dancing exactly. About just, just it. yeah, cruising basically. Yeah. Well, it has come to that time. I think it's time for a bit of Michael Bolton. Would you Absolutely. say? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, a bit late, say. isn't it? But <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to get him on for you now. Yeah, How thanks. about that? Thank you. Okay. okay. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, James, can you hit those ooze? That's the question. Oh, that is a good question. Should we, should we give it a go? Go on. You, you go first. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's not bad. Hey, see? See? No. Are you ready? Yeah, Are you go ready for this? Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Wait. That's, that's, that's not fair. You can't just get Michael Bolton in to do your. Oh, sorry, you. mate. Yeah, that was that was cheating, that's wasn't not it? Fair. <laughs> no, it was definitely Bolton there, wasn't yeah, it? It was definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what, James? Maybe we should do a competition today. Yeah. Because I've, you know, what I'd really like to give out. What have you got? My first batch of homemade chili sauce. Oh, the chili plant amazing. is finally ready. Yes. Perhaps one lucky yeah. listener should get the first batch, what do you think? Definitely, definitely. And I tell you what, if you win this, you could even choose your level of heat. Yeah, well... F- so you can is, you can just tell me, okay, Ben, you know, that. load on the heat. Yeah. Because that's what we like to do this morning yeah, yeah, anyway, isn't it, James? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should heat. do a little competition. Yeah, I think I think we should. Yeah? Yeah. All right. What, well, what's the competition going to be? We'll have to have a think, won't we? Yeah, we'll, we'll get back. We'll get back to you on that one. Maybe put on a bit of Toto, you know. Yeah. We'll get back to you on that. Well, I tell you what, I um, yeah, I actually had a perfect song for you this really? morning, James. You Did ready? you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's nice. Is yeah. it? Is it? Is it a compliment or? No, it is. It's is absolutely it, um... fantastic. I, I've been looking forward to getting this on for you, actually. Oh really? Oh, uh, that's, is that's is nice. it all right if I play that for you now? Yeah, go for it. Go okay. On. I'm, all right. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Okay. Enjoy this, mate. Tell you what, this reminds me of. What? Playing GTA Vice City. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably not yeah. supposed to admit that. Yeah, probably not. But great soundtrack though. Fantastic track. Oh yes. <laughs> right, well we have a very, very special very song request special. now. Don't we, James? This we is do. special. We do indeed. I'm excited about this. This is this a fantastic great. choice, by the way, and this goes out to Rufus and Lila. How are you doing both? You're right. And Gareth and Susie as well. How are you of both course. doing? Gareth's a very talented drummer we've had on the show before, haven't yeah, we, James? Indeed, yeah. Indeed. And Susie Singer as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Drive Northwest, great band. Yeah, check them out. Yeah. Check them out. We've played them multiple times on the show, actually. Maybe we should get some on this show yeah, as well. Yeah, we should. We definitely should. I think we should. I think we should. Anyway, I'm going to have to apologise, Rufus. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't have Batman on the show with me. No. I'm sorry. sorry. You I'm, couldn't make I, it. I'm as close as you can get, I think, to yes. Batman on this show. Exactly. Really. And that's not at all. You so. are like a masked Avenger, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, sort so. of. If I masked, you mean I wear glasses. Yeah, and... exactly. I don't know about the Avengers. You're probably bit. more like Doctor Strange, I yeah. reckon. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit harsh, thought. but uh, thought I'll take thought. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about? Let's get this little request on. We said it was a special request. We're wasting time. Let's get it straight on, shall we? Yeah, put it on. All right, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to turn this one up a bit too loud. There's going to be some gain issues, Yeah. but I, I just don't care. No, let's go for In it. this scenario. For let's it. get it on. Okay, enjoy this. Come on. Let's get it on. <laughs> Oh, this could be dangerous. We've got our very own Ghostbuster on the way. Welcome to the O2 messaging service. Oh, sorry, sorry, the person sorry. you're calling is unable to take your call. Please leave your message after the tone. To re-record your message, key hash at any time. <laughs> Is that? What's going on? What's going on in here? (laughs) (laughs) 
I think that'll do. That'll do, that'll yeah. do yeah. That went on for far, <laughs> far too long. I'm sorry about that. You'll we'll probably explain what that was as well. Well, it was going to it was going to be yeah. a, a minute or two of great radio. It was. <laughs> That's exactly what it was going to be, yeah. I, I'm not even going to attend. I'm just going to move on. Just move on. <laughs> just move on just that. forget that. Yeah. All right, I tell you what. Let's continue with the show. Because now, you know, I have teased you by saying that the fantastic Pixie McKenna is on the show. Celebrity. Celebrity doctor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, oh, those damn. are two words that when they go together, you know you're talking business. Yeah, celebrity boy. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get her on the show. Really excited <laughs> about this. Tell if that was, yeah, no, I'm, yeah, let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should probably just move on, shouldn't we? Really, tell you what, just to make it seem more seamless, should I just, I just play like a little tag? Or yeah, something? yeah, yeah right, okay, and then we'll just get it straight on. How about that? Do it. Right, okay. Thursday breakfast on Source FM. I'm Dr. Pixie McKenna. I'm a GP, a media doctor, and today I'm speaking about World School Milk Day. Fantastic. Well, very, very warm welcome to you, Pixie. Thanks for this. Uh, of course, coming t- straight onto the topic then, milk and calcium. Absolutely essential, isn't it? It is. It is. I suppose we all talk about calcium and remember it from biology lessons in school and stuff, and parents, you know, understand the, the, the importance of it. But really, I think um, we need to be just thinking a bit more carefully about it and understanding that it is essential in terms of your child's diet um, if you want them to ultimately build healthy bones and healthy healthy teeth into adulthood. And in terms of getting in their calcium, of course, you know, milk is, is, is obviously very well known to be a fantastic source of calcium. But to me, it looks like, you know, there is a bit of concern, of course, because a lot of parents actually, uh, well, a lot of children, sorry, do rely actually on, on having uh, milk in their breakfast to get the calcium. OK, but unfortunately, it looks like actually, you know, a lot of this milk comes through school. And if school stops providing it, of course, there might be a problem. There might be a lack of calcium. Yeah, but look, you know, great if you can get milk into your kids in their cereal or small amounts when they're um, having their meals or sneak it into custards or soups or sauces. That's brilliant because they're getting calcium in that way. But the school, the carton of school milk um, for your four to six year old, yeah, it'll give them half of their recommended calcium intake um, if they drink it. So, you know, that's a free resource. It's nutritional. It quenches their thirst. And it's available to all kids, whatever type of school or whatever their background is. Um, and it would be a shame to see that go. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think a lot of parents, it sounds like, um, you know, really do get a benefit from the EU milk scheme, of course, getting getting that calcium to, to their kids. And, and just thinking about, you know, what would happen, and I don't mean to scare anyone, but what what are kind of health implications would there be, you know, if, if a child doesn't receive enough calcium? Well, I suppose... You know, what the reports are telling us is that one in seven kids are going to school without their breakfast. So they are actually heavily relying on, on this milk, um, assuming they're drinking it. But, you know, that, that's, a, that's a lot of children. Um, and so that would impact about 1.2 million kids missing out on a valuable source of calcium, which means further on down the line, we could see problems like rickets. Um, and we can also, you know, anticipate if, if this generation isn't going to have enough calcium on board, that we are going to get more and more osteoporosis. And osteoporosis is where the bones are porous. And, and into adulthood, if you fall over, a simple fall that you might have with healthy bones could result in a fracture if your bones are, are spongy or porous. And, and, and that can take a long time to recover from. Well, it certainly sounds like uh, you know, parents perhaps should take a, a minute or, or so just to think, you know, how much calcium is my child getting? Are they getting enough? You know, would you think there's, a, there's, a, there's an easy way to do that? Can, can, can any parent just sit down and think about you know, exactly how much they're taking and how much they should have? I suppose you think about giving them maybe two to three portions a day. So if they get their portion in their school milk, they might get their portion in their milk in the morning with their cereal. And actually, they might be getting their calcium through their cereal. But yogurts and hard cheese are a great way. Kids like, you know, they like cheese. They like grated cheese. They like yogurts. Um, so they are getting calcium through those sources as well. Fantastic. And, and veg. You know, one day, you know, there's veg. You can get it tofu. You can get it through a whole host of other things. But, but those are the things, you know, children especially the the primary school age group are quite happy to munch on a bit of cheese or have a yogurt. Fantastic. And just a, just a quick note for people as well, because I know that um, the NHS often advises, you know, as kids get older, perhaps cut down on the fat content of the, of the milk. I don't know if that's something that you would yeah. be on board so with. If, I mean, if your child, most kids 
uh, when they're over the age of five, if they've eaten a reasonably healthy diet and they're healthy, um, you can st- you can give them a lower fat alternative, which will still have the same amount of calcium. Great. And I'm just thinking uh, about, you know, kids who, who, who might not, you know, imagine a, a kid who just really detests milk or something, you know, uh, how would you advise they get the calcium in? I mean, presumably <laughs> you can get other other foods as well. I, my... Yeah. And, you know, you can get, I mean, I suppose presenting a child with a, a big glass of milk when they hate milk is, is the wrong <laughs> thing to do. And I certainly can remember kids in school who hated milk. And you don't, you know, you don't want that to go into adulthood <laughs> where it's actually, you know, we all have things that we were made eat that we didn't like or eat or drink. Um, but certainly a small amount in a cereal um, or, or sneaking it into things like sauces and custards and, and, and that. But equally, calcium sources, you know, can be go beyond milk and, and they can be other produce like yogurts and cheese. Fantastic. It doesn't have to be just milk. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, it, it certainly sounds like milk is super beneficial anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of parents would be really sad to see the milk scheme go. I mean, I'm just thinking about in terms of what, you know, I suppose there's not really a, a lot that, uh, you know, the average person can do. But I'm just thinking of, you know, perhaps if parents, you know, might be interested in finding out a bit more about this and, and at least just, you know, making sure they read up on it and, and perhaps yeah. as well thinking about the, the milk scheme. It's important, yeah, and I think, you know, for them, because some people might not be aware uh, that this is even being offered to their kids in school, um, they can go to the milk.co.uk website, which is supported by Dairy UK, and there's lots of information on there about children, primary school children, older children, adolescents, and, and adults, all, all with regards to milk and calcium and its benefits. Great. Well, thanks very much, Pixie. I really appreciate your time today. I think that's uh, very useful for people, even if it's just, you know, to start thinking a little bit more about, you know, just, well, ma- let's make sure my kids are getting enough calcium. I think that's a, a fantastic start for, for our listeners. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah thanks for your and, time. And it's really important for, for children and adults, like. Fantastic. And Pixie, this, I'm afraid it has, it's come to the time of the show where I ask you a bit of a daft question. I'm sorry about this, but I'd just love to get you a song choice on, actually. I don't know if you have any favourite songs that I could possibly play for you in honour of your Ooh. appearance. <laughs> uh, my my six year old daughter is a massive Bon Jovi fan, so oh. if you play anything by Bon Jovi, oh yes, fantastic! Delighted. You know, I'm I'm going to be delighted to play that. That's wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Pixie, thanks so much. I shall let you go so you can chat to other people. But yes, thank you very much for chatting to us on Source. Just double checking, actually, that you got across everything that you wanted to or if there's any points that you wanted. Good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Awesome. No, well, thanks, Pixie. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Bye then. Bye. Bye. Shut through the heart and your heart to bend down. You get Oh, oh, James, James, we Uh, we forgot our backing track. I'll put it on. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. It is the day of many fantastic song Indeed requests as well, isn't it, it James? Is. We've just got another cheeky just number. Just got another one come through. Yeah, uh, big shout out to Sharon, Marion and Ness. Oh, oh, oh. This is a good one, isn't it? Yeah. They've obviously Ooh. got cracking taste, haven't they? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Nice work here. Yeah, right, I'm going to go crazy in the studio now. <laughs> oh, oh. One, two, two. Come on, James. Do some bars. Quick. Bidi bop, bidi bop, bidi bop. <laughs> All right, James. I thought what the competition is. All okay. right. Oh wow. Okay. Here it goes. Yeah. So you win the uh, you win the and I'm going I'm to actually specify that it's going to be blindingly hot. Okay. okay. Homemade chili sauce. Hot chili All sauce. you have to do is text into the studio and tell me who you think is the sexiest Avenger. Oh, that's that's a great one. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Text me direct. Go on, just do it. <laughs> 07860 What, what was that number again, James? Uh, <laughs> good question. 07860 Do it. Text me. Who is the hunkiest Avenger? Who's the hunkiest? Actually, you know, who's the... Hunkiest man. I, I'm hunkiest talking man. about men here. Okay, actually. we're talking purely men. Here. Purely men. Okay. Hunkiest, yeah, sure. man. hunkiest man. Hunkiest male Avenger. All right. Okay. Who would, who would you pick out of interest? Um... I'm not sure I can give it away because I was going to just jump on the bandwagon if oh, I say. Oh, that's a good point. I have got yeah. one in my mind, but if I say, you know, yeah, all right, then there all won't right. be any competition. But the best answer, as judged by us, yeah, yeah, is going to receive this nice. chili sauce. And come on, James, chili sauce—that's yeah, amazing price. Chili it's an sauce. amazing price. Brilliant. And I tell you what, it, it will blow your head off. I'm just yeah. warning you. I'm not sure that makes you really want it. though, <laughs> I can not tone it down. I tone it down a little bit. Chili. I'll tone it down a bit. <laughs> it might have the Komodo dragons in it though, yeah. and they are not. 
to yeah. be meddled yeah. with. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine. Well, hopefully not real Komodo dragons. Like, <laughs> no, it's like a tree, right? The bacteria <laughs> salvaged from their glands. <laughs> yeah. Lethal. No, luckily not. Um, I'll tell you what, tell you what, James, what do you think? Uh, one more song and then we'll press on, get another interview on? Yeah, that's a good plan. Have you got a song in mind? I did have. I did choose one. Okay. I don't know what you're thinking about this one. I'll just show you this. Is that, yeah, is that all right? That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's get this bad boy on. You're going to love this, all right? Toto, the band with the most lead singers in history, I'm pretty sure, James. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah, it was a new singer every album. Yeah, much, something like that, saying? I think. Yeah. It's a shame, actually. I don't know why they never got in touch with me. I was I waiting <laughs> all that time. No, it's bad. Missed the trick there. No, and you you look great because you've got like a really nice rock and roll beard as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure the singing's really down, though, with me. No, That's but you could problem. kind of just convert it into kind of, you know, just... Yeah, yeah. You're, you're good at bars, laying down bars. Yeah, like, bah, 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 bah. yeah no, exactly. I'm, I'm got not it. sure that go, that goes too well with a Toto <laughs> style. No, it does. It's, uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. Well, I tell you what we're going to do. Okay, now listen close. And we're still winning that competition. You just have to text. You know, yeah. Whatever. Let's move just on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's text. Um, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to play another interview. Okay, and then straight after this, we are going to finish up with a bunch more tracks. Actually, yeah. some music. Yeah, yeah. I might force you to listen to uh, my new song as well. Is that all right? Well, yeah, I think you should. Yeah, right? yeah, I think you should. Maybe. I think we'll, so. we'll see yeah, how yeah. time goes. Maybe we should sure get another Toto one on. I'm not quite <laughs> sure, but we should probably try. Yeah. Well, I tell you probably. what, let's let's move on because I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this interview on for you now because I think this is uh, fantastic. And I'm afraid, yeah, it is time to, well, take a brief detour into something a little more serious now. Seriousness. Okay, yeah. so we are okay. going to have a serious interview now. This is Jason Darby. He's the head of psychology at Thomas International. And essentially what this, uh, what he's done is he's gone ahead with this survey, essentially looking, um, and he's basically used a load of uh, different tests as well, looking at the differences between uh, males and females in senior leadership roles. And basically the goal of this mm-hmm. was to tr- basically try and lay to rest those, um, you know, quite harmful stereotypes that, do, yeah. that surround that's around this. Okay, you know, you often hear, don't you, very unfortunately about women in senior leadership roles actually receiving a bit of stick for the, yeah, you know using absolutely. the same terms as, as their male yeah. colleagues or you know doing exactly the same things yeah you know absolutely. but they receive this kind of stereotype so you know basically what they've what they're doing is they're trying to address this and they've done this research that essentially is showing okay well looking at these data there's absolutely no difference whatsoever yeah. uh, so i think this is uh, this is you know really topical let's get it on uh, and of course it does really tie into the issue which we're always pressing on the show a lot actually and that's uh, of course women in stem because that's always yeah. an important issue encouraging you know uh, girls to go into uh, science technology engineering and maths yeah, absolutely. Related yeah. issue. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually delighted to have Jason on the show with us today to chat a little bit about this. So, yeah, let's get serious just for a minute, chat about this. Um, and then, don't worry, things will quickly get a bit daft again after that because we're going to get his song choice on, yeah. which is amazing, isn't it? It is. It's a fantastic It's amazing choice. song choice. <laughs> yeah, All right, absolutely well, brilliant. For now, I am going to invite Jason to the show. Hope you enjoy. Thursday Breakfast on Source FM. So I am Jason Darby. I am the head of psychology at a company called Thomas International. So we're a global business and we do all sorts of different psychological assessments ranging from cognitive ability, behavioural personality. But we look at the, the kind of applied business value of doing this. How can we predict who's going to be successful in particular jobs? How can we help people be more successful at work through development programmes? And what we've done recently is some really exciting research looking at the personality and emotional characteristics of men and women in senior leadership positions, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Fantastic. Well, a very warm you, Jason. Thanks very much for coming on the show to chat to us about this. I think this is something that, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, it does require a lot of attention, isn't it? This, uh, you know, the differences in, in how men and women are perceived in leadership roles. Um, I'll just let you kind of explain a little bit more about this study, actually, because it, it sounds really fascinating. I think, you know, for people out there who perhaps might be thinking about this, this kind of well and truly lays that to rest, isn't it? There are no differences between men and women in those roles. That, that's right, and, and, and we were really excited to see, see these outcomes because we wanted to try to explore why there aren't more women in senior leadership positions. Now, there are going to be many factors, social, cultural factors, all sorts of things having an input here, but from a personality point of view, we looked at a group of very senior female leaders, compared them to a group of very senior male leaders, and we wanted to see if there were any statistically significant differences between their personality traits. And we found that there weren't, as you saw. We, you were as likely to be extremely assertive or not, have lots and lots of empathy or not, regardless of whether you were a man or a woman. So what that informed us to was that the kind of building blocks here are, are pretty similar. Well, they're, they're the same. 
So what's leading to women not getting ahead as far? And what we have explored is the fact that behaviours are viewed positively and negatively differently when they're shown by men or when they're shown by women. So uh, a man being very, very direct and, and almost telling what to do is seen as being assertive. But if a woman does the same, she might be more likely to be called bossy, which is more of a negative description, which that could be playing a part in, in holding people back. Yeah, so it, I mean, it sounds just, you know, kind of straight off the bat here that it, it, whilst there isn't, you know, a difference in how many women actually are, there is indeed a difference in how they're perceived. Absolutely. And I think that the, uh, the, the kind of challenge that Serena Williams had at the US Grand Slam recently whether you agree or disagree with the actual rulings that were made is a slightly different conversation, but what she brought to a lot of people's attention was the idea that perhaps women are treated negatively or more negatively when they show the exact same behaviours that are seen by men. And th this can have a real impact on women's opportunities at work because if there are certain stereotypical terms or language that we use to describe success and people are more likely to use those terms to describe men, then when a woman's being evaluated for a job or for a promotion, she may be described using negative terms, even though she's showing the exact personality traits and behaviours that would actually make her a fantastic leader, which is a huge shame because it means that we, we and, and businesses could be missing out on a huge amount of talent. So in, in terms of beginning to address this, Jason, because of course, you know, this sounds, you know, totally straight straight away inherently totally unfair doesn't it this um this this kind of total difference in in the same you know in how the same traits are being described i'd love to come back to that in a second but really i think probably one of the most pressing things that we could talk about is you know how do we actually begin to address this you know it's, it's easy to say that it needs addressing but how would you how would you recommend that people begin to at least try to tackle this issue so there's no one silver bullet solution unfortunately but what you can do is start shifting the balance towards a more fair and inclusive type of talent management process in businesses. So one of the ways you can do that is taking a more evidence-based approach. So avoiding selection or promotion decisions being made on, on gut feel or, you know, you look at who your existing top managers look like, let's find someone similar because that's so influenced by the stereotypes and biases that people might hold. Whereas if you use... Um, actual hard data on someone's previous performance from another job or if you look at psychological factors like how quickly they learn their behavioral communication style their personality like we did here if that's informing your decision you're doing it based on something that really is predictive of success rather than stereotypal bias that can creep in that can really help businesses and the area it can help the most is during uh, stages like interviews where so much of your personal views or feelings about someone can can cloud or at least influence your judgment that's really interesting i think it's it probably comes on i mean i'm, I'm of course i'm no expert at all but I'm, I'm guessing it would kind of breach onto a, a much wider issue at play here as well you, you know you're saying about um you know people's kind of views can cloud that judgment i mean you often hear don't you about i mean i don't know if there's much truth in it but you often hear that if you know people are allowed to select people for their company say they might often actually you know, lead towards hiring people like themselves. So, I mean, that isn't, um, you know, that's, that's well, really bad for diversity. But, but also, it, as you say, it's not using evidence at all. It's using, you know, and, and these might, of course, be unconscious, I'm guessing, these, these unconscious biases that, that everybody's bound to have. They, they are, and I think that people sometimes get a bit worried when they hear the term unconscious bias, thinking, you know, am I, am I unaware of the, these, these bad characteristics or traits? But they're, they're, they're behaviours and ways of thinking that can be perfectly harmless when you think about, you know, you're on holiday and you bump into somebody and you recognize their accent because they're from the same part of the, the country as you, you immediately feel a little bit more positive towards them because there's that air of familiarity. Yes. That's completely harmless in that context. Whereas if you then have an assessment center with a very diverse group of people and somebody's from the same part of the country as you, they've got similar interests, they've gone to the same university, you, knowingly or not, might view them more positively. And then when you're evaluating your, their behavior, we're only human, it can have an influence. Whereas a check and balance to that is then sitting down and saying, well, let's look at these candidates and go, well, actually, these individuals have personality traits that we know are pretty good predictors of leadership success. Plus, we know they've got good background experience, plus other factors. Maybe they're the ones that we should be taking forward instead. Even though that person's nice, we're trying to separate liking somebody from whether they're going to be good at their job.
Yes, fantastic. I mean, it sounds really like, um, you know, the general thing that, that would be required in this case, and I know you've already kind of chatted a little bit about this, but the general thing that might be required for companies to target any of that really is just using some sort of fair system, right? Some fair assessment that, that discludes that. And, and obviously in there I'm including, you know, these unfortunate, um, you know, biases against women, for example, you know, remove all of that from the situation by having essentially these, you know, robust, external assessments in place and it's accessible to people because when people typically think of psychological testing it, it people may think very large companies definitely large banks large orders huge graduate recruitment schemes and, and yes they do use a lot of assessment as part of their processes but small to medium businesses up and down the country and, and around the world are using this type of science because it doesn't have to be arduous it can be five to ten minutes 20 minutes half an hour at most if you're doing lots and lots of different things that you want to measure and you can make it a positive experience for candidates and for the people doing these types of assessments they can learn a huge amount about themselves as individuals and then you as a business user can get a huge amount of insight and if that insight helps you make better recruitment decisions better development programs better promotion decisions and it helps you with your diversity why not do it because it can it can have massive value in so many different areas Great, and Jason, just coming back to the um, just to the study again, if you don't mind, uh, I was just really hoping really to delve a little bit further, if you have the time, of course, yeah, um, of course. into 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 exactly what um, you know these personality traits and you know the emotional intelligence test, exactly what traits were being assessed in this study, because I think this might be really interesting for for people to actually you know perhaps think about a, l- a little further. So we we use two different types of personality assessment here. One is looking at your, your kind of core personality. So these are characteristics like conscientiousness, um, which is looking at things like work ethic. Do you set goals for yourself? Are you a bit of a, a, bit of a perfectionist at times? We looked at things like your approach to risk, how competitive you were. Do you deal well with ambiguity? So, so that was looking at almost core personality. And then we also looked at some of the emotional traits, which are also personality related. So these are things like how easy you find it to empathize with other people or how well you manage your emotions if you're, you're feeling really happy or if you're feeling really sad because we wanted to look at those two areas because it's where some of the stereotypes might creep in. So if you ask a, a group of people, do you think that men or women um, show more empathy, people will probably say women are more likely to show empathy. But actually what our evidence has shown is that they don't. It, it's more of a, a stereotype. So when you meet a woman who does show a lot of empathy, it confirms that viewpoint, yes. but if you meet somebody that doesn't, it's a bit harder to then change your way of thinking. So we wanted to look at those two different areas to get a really comprehensive overview um, of the personality and emotional traits of these different leaders. And then when we saw that there weren't any major differences, that's when we wanted to explore why are there still less women in senior positions? And from further research, qualitative kind of discussions with people, it seems to be that the behaviours shown by women, even if they're the same as men, they're described negatively. So I think, as I said before, the, the direct man is described as assertive. The direct woman can be described as bossy. Uh, a man showing a lot of emotion in a meeting could be said to be expressing a lot of passion. But if a woman shows a lot of emotion, she could be said that she's lost composure. Now, this, this will vary between people, but if that experience is happening a lot, and if people are describing these behaviours differently, it, it, it's an issue because it, it clearly is holding people back. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks, Jason. Thanks for expanding on that. That's so uh, wonderfully clear for our for our listeners. And of course, we we were talking, um, you know, in depth about what businesses and organisations can do to begin combating the issue. You know, we're, we're talking about these um, these assessments and and you know, trying to remove that um, those unconscious biases and things. And, and and really, I just and this perhaps is a bit of a silly question, but I'd be really interested to get your view on this. Looking towards the future, Jason, do you are you kind of optimistic about about our ability to to start removing Removing these biases, do you, do you think the kind of workforce of the future might be, you know, entirely, completely diverse and free of bias? Tough question. I, 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 am, I am a bit of an optimist, uh, and I think it's a really good question. I think that yes, it will happen. I think that it's only going to happen in a time scale that I think is acceptable, which is quickly, if businesses really take responsibility to start doing this. And I think most businesses do. Um, I think you can see all around, uh, especially in the UK, our, our culture and society now there's a real focus on diversity and, and inclusion. And I think that if we start using more evidence-based information, 
in recruitment, in development, in promotion, that's a really good start because we should be getting more diverse people into businesses. They bring different life uh, perspectives to things. It adds value to businesses and it creates role models for people. So it hopefully we'll get to a point where there are there are even more women in senior leadership positions that, that younger women can look up to as role models, that we can see that it, businesses are performing better because they have a more diverse set of opinions and life experiences contributing to their strategy. So I'm optimistic that it is going to change. How quickly? I'd like to think it will be quickly. Um, ho- hopefully in the next kind of, you know, few years or so, I'd like to see things moving fast. It completely depends on, on the businesses around the world and how quickly they adopt these type of methods. Well, Jason, thanks so much indeed. I really do appreciate your time today. I'd love just to, uh, you know, towards the end of the interview now, I'd, I'd love just to um, point listeners in the direction of a bit more information if you have any websites to hand at all. We do. So if anyone's interested just finding out a bit more about this research or what we do, you can go to thomasinternational.co.uk and that is Thomas with a T-H. You'll also see that we're running a series of breakfast seminars across the country over the coming weeks where we're going to go into a huge amount of detail behind this study, what we did, what we found, it, what traits specifically we looked at, what the applied value could be. And there'll be a white paper being published uh, in the coming weeks as well. So there's going to be so much information. So again, if you go to thomasinternational.co.uk, keep an eye because there's going to be so much communication and extra depth and detail coming out. Well, Jason, thanks so much. Very last question for you. And this is something totally different, I'm afraid, but I'd just love to give you um, give you a song request, actually. I don't know if you have a, a song in your mind that I could possibly play for. I think it's only fair because you've come on the show, so you deserve a song. <laughs> I, I will. So um, I'm going to say uh, Don't Speak by No Doubt. And the reason that I am I'm saying that song is because it reminds me of home and lots of fond memories. Oh, fantastic. That is such a, I haven't heard that song in way too long. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love playing that. Thanks, Jason. No worries. <laughs> Thanks well, I'll let you go. Thanks so much for your time. Speak to you later. Bye. Bye, Jason. Right, it has come to that time, I'm afraid. It is the end of another Thursday morning breakfast show for you here on Source FM. I know, it is a very sad time, isn't it, James? You'll have to come back again soon, James, won't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, yeah. Back Definitely. in the studio soon. Definitely. Do join me every week. I'd be delighted if you could uh, join me again next week as well. 7.30 until 9 o'clock here on Source. And do stay tuned to Source FM today, people, OK? Plenty more shows coming up. More on that in a second. But I'd just like to really thank all of my very special guests today. Number one, of course, thank you to James. Thanks, James. Uh, thanks thank for coming well. in. Thanks for having me. It's You're very good. welcome whenever. You know that. You can pop into the studio. Thank co-present you much, whenever yeah, you want thank you and I would like to thank very much our celebrity doctor guest today Pixie McKenna fantastic chatting to Pixie thank you very much to Jason Darby who we heard from just now from Thomas International and thank you to Ian Ferguson from the co-op group we heard earlier the environment manager for co-op and thank you of course to you thank you for joining us here on Source FM for your Thursday breakfast show <laughs> Now, coming up next on Source is the fantastic DJ Steve. Steve. So make sure you stay stay tuned for that. After that, Steve Foster, Carl Coleman, Luke Jenkins and Simon Neild later on today with Inside Local Music with a special show today. Actually, it is the pre-last Park Live of the Year show. So a few of the artists from the Park Live Festival are coming in for a chat with Simon. We will finish up with one more song, I think, James, and then we will say our tender, yes. tender goodbyes. Tender farewells, mm-hmm. I feel, yes. We'll leave one on and then uh, DJ Steve, Steve will be with you. So very I tell you shortly. what, James, I'm going to let you choose because it's about time I let you choose, isn't okay. it? Ooh. It's not very fair, is it? Kept Ooh. choosing things like Michael. Well, I suppose you I mean, chose I Michael Bolton. That, but yeah, so that's yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, what about I've got so I've got four, you know, four bi- VIP VIP um, suggestions for you. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know if you. Okay. Well, you know what? You know what we haven't had today. What's that? We haven't had a bit of rod, have we? <laughs> <laughs> you are quite right, sir. You're quite right. <laughs> I think we should probably get some of that yeah, one. That's, it. that's a good one to finish on, I think. Really, would it? Well, that's us out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And that's and we'll us see gone. See you soon. Yeah, see you soon. See you soon. <laughs>